Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. Silver price manipulation is a very interesting topic and I want to dive into this a little deeper uh, because it can affect the way we buy, sell, and trade and it could affect us as investors, especially in the precious metals world. I mean, silver stackings are hobby, but if markets are in a bubble, if gold and silver is in a bubble to an extreme extent behind the scenes controlling these markets, because it is a power move, it's a power play for the higher ups to be greedy or stem from greediness, then what's the point? So this video is going to break down silver price manipulation if prices are rigged i'm going to share my opinion so before we start make sure to smash that like button let's see if this video can get 150 likes every single like counts i appreciate all the support link will be in the description to this article as well so silver manipulation market manipulation also called price manipulation can be defined broadly as a purposeful effort to control prices this sort of manipulation exists in financial markets as traders try to influence the markets. It may be responsible for some short-term aberrations in asset prices, including the price of silver. However, there's another more specific definition. According to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, manipulation is intentional conduct designed to deceive investors by controlling or artificially affecting the market for a security. Now, this includes rigging quotes, prices, uh, or trades to create false or deceptive pictures of the demand for an asset, which we call spoofing. J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, the Dutch bank, all got caught spoofing, and actually three of J.P. Morgan's employees got arrested, so it is a criminal charge now. It is uh, more harsh of a punishment, which I hope will start to, st it, it will, it will start to nip this in the butt, because <clears throat> I definitely think that this could really hurt prices especially when there's potential for a rally to take place if prices are being manipulated or if they're held in a bubble to some extent by the higher ups by the feds by the government by the banks by just whales that own a, an extremely large portion of of a, of one of these markets or one of these places assets it's really not good it could definitely hurt the market for the long term so um, a popular belief within the precious metals investing community is that gold is manipulated and the same goes for silver. Generally downwards is what described as price suppression. So market manipulation also called, uh, I think, we, yeah, we just read that part. So, um, so let's keep going on. So this is, uh, this is more specifically, uh, many investors believe that the market for silver is systematically manipulated. So they're saying that it's a system in place, that it's almost, uh, there, there's a, there's a rhyme and reason to it. There's a rhythm. And there are many variations of this theory. Some say that precious metals are under the thumb of central bankers, while others blame big banks and the use of derivatives, naked shorts or high frequency trading for the declines in the price of silver. There are also worries that the discrepancy between paper silver and physical silver, the fairness of London trading, declining inventories at COMEX, and the, le the leasing of silver at first glance, this theory makes sense, especially that the silver market is much smaller than the gold market, so it is easier to influence it. While a few financial institutions have already been fined for influencing or manipulating silver prices, and they're talking about J.P. Morgan, by the way. Moreover, it is commonly known that in the 1960s, the U.S. government kept the price of silver frozen at $1.29 per ounce. Additionally, in the 1970s, the Hunt brothers for some time attempted to corner the market in silver. Whether they purposely intended to manipulate the market or not, their actions pushed the price of silver upwards, not downwards. We actually saw in the 30s, FDR... Um, FDR actually changed the gold to silver ratio from 16 to 1 to 75 to 1, so that could also be a form of manipulation. Long-term cycles in silver. However, academic research did not find any clear evidence of silver price suppression. Moreover, when we look at long-term behavior of silver prices, we see clear cl uh, clinical in, in patterns and not a permanent downward trend or even a flat line. So, we're looking at this chart and it's showing that right here from zero from this dollar 29 range in the 7 in or in you know in January of 68 we see this this huge huge rally and this was when silver was $50 we also see in 2011 when silver was $50 so they're saying that when these happen there's manipulation but there's also price suppression but this is anytime 
uh, anytime an asset or a market's going to skyrocket this high, there's a huge red flag indicator that's going to crash. So that's not really price suppression. That's just the market's correcting back down to its normal prices because that's not normal. That's abnormal. This would be the norm. So if something happens abnormally up, it's going to crash downwards as well. So it says manipulation with a question mark right here. And this is what we really wanted to figure out because there's Y2K, stock market volatility, the, the depression, you know, all this stuff happening during the 2000s which could influence all starting from September 11th that we know as obviously so uh, therefore the long term perspective and especially looking at the 2000s it's hard to understand the accusation of manipulation in the silver market the cries of suppression are extremely selective which i was just kind of talking about because there's so many things that could have actually naturally affected the prices so when the price of silver is decreasing then this is obvious effect of the evil conspirators. The when the price of silver was rising in the 2000s, there was no manipulation. The true market forces were at work, which I just mentioned. The influence of the price should only be short-lived, as low prices cure low prices. Hence, which is definitely true, I like that low prices cure low prices because when the price is low, everyone's going to be buying it, which kind of pushes it upwards. There's support there. So hence, any attempts to systematically suppress silver prices would be counterproductive, since the reduction in silver uh price of the would trigger a market reaction in the form of higher demand and upward pressure on the price so uh this is talking about the hunt brothers now so the hunt brothers and silver thursday as a reminder the hunt brothers accumulated silver for a decade but they were estimated to hold only one-third of the entire world's supply of silver without counting the significant amount held by governments moreover their attempt to corner the market failed as the price of silver plunged on march 27 1980 so-called silver thursday causing losses for over a billion dollars for the hunt brothers wow talk about whales so um by the way whales are people in the markets that own so much of or they own such a large portion of that asset or that market that they can influence the prices single-handedly so this is called short selling <clears throat> so this is definitely important so many people accuse bullion banks of short selling of silver in order to drive down the price what is short selling let's start with silver short selling which is the scale or the sale of bullion that is not currently owned by the uh, by the seller usually borrowed and the subsequent repurchase of the metal the idea is to take advantage of the price decline as it enables to repurchase the white metal at a lower price and we say short selling is that when it occurs without first borrowing it or at least ensuing or ensuring that the precious metal can be borrowed the short seller can sometimes fail to deliver silver to the buyer the impact of these shorts thus controversial <clears throat> the popular story is that the Fed uses bullion banks as its agents to put on these silver shorts to the COMEX to drive the price of silver down. It protects the U.S. dollar's value and enables banks to repurchase silver at lower prices. So it's a very, very manipulative, uh, very manipulative way to do it. So let's talk about J.P. Morgan and silver. J.P. Morgan is an investment bank headquartered in New York. It's the largest bank in the United States and one of the biggest in the world. So uh this is uh, jp morgan chase considered to be a bad dude and this is because he's a greedy manipulator jp morgan's been caught manipulating prices across the board they got caught with millions of dollars in misprinted gold bars that were going to be sold on the black market they've got caught several different times spoofing which is setting uh, placing false buy orders on the exchanges and canceling them before they go through so they're just shady people so uh this is talking about jp morgan specifically you know in particular precious metals analysts don't like the bank as accused of selling undercovered shorts on comex however these analysts uh seem not to understand what bullion banks are they don't bet on price moves instead they do the opposite side of trade speculators as a reminder jp morgan is an lbma market maker and it's additionally responsible with other banks for clearing silver transactions so it must engage in silver market but it doesn't mean that it's able to permanently suppress silver prices conclusion so here's the most important part <clears throat> the bottom line is that despite many variations of the theory of manipulation in the silver market there 
supporters hardly offer any proof, just as with other asset classes. There are both bull markets when the price of silver goes up as well as bear markets when the price goes down. Bear markets do not imply that there is deliberate suppression of the price of silver. This is normal market behavior resulting from changes in the silver market's fundamentals. Indeed, the fundamental factors such as the U.S. dollar, real interest rates, risk aversion, industrial demand, or the situation for gold and base metals markets do a very good job of explaining the behavior of silver prices in the long term. So, not only whether it is, it is or not manipulated, uh, but also how successfully we use silver as an investment and how profitably we trade it. <clears throat> so, it's definitely an interesting point. I thought this was a great article. What do you guys think is happening? Do you guys think that spoofing and stuff influences the prices? It's always interesting to me to kind of figure out what factors are influencing it at what rate. You know, if JP Morgan is placing false buy orders, spoofing, to what extent are they really affecting prices for the upwards or for the downwards, you know, for suppression or for this upwards, you know, if it really is manipulated, to what extent do these people have these have power or control over the markets? That's the most interesting question I ask. And also, you know, how much is does supply and demand affect or how much of, of a pull does supply and demand have compared to market manipulation and so on and so forth? And if it is manipulated, to what degree? Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Like I said, the link to this article will be in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Link will be in the description. Make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe for new because I do post daily videos. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.